one of the ways to walk in integrity is to receive the help of God. Temptations happen many times because of limitations. Did you hear what I said? Temptations happen many times because of limitations. One of the ways to avoid temptations is to pray that the limitations that empower them are taken away from your life. I pray for you. Whatever has crippled you economically, making your allegiance to God vacillate, your integrity as a child of God vacillate, this moment, by the privilege of this grace that God has placed, I release you into a realm of fearful abundance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hear me. You can have what to say, but it does not mean men will listen. Some of the smartest people in the world are the loneliest people. I have seen people even in ministry men and women of God gifted with character with solid integrity and yet nobody knows they are there and sometimes I say please can I pray with you what God has placed upon your life all of us should benefit from it I have seen people sing in passing these guys are supposed to be leading nations in worship and they are not even aware they are worshipers and when I heard their voices why are they here? Some of them were cleaners. Cleaning rooms and singing. And you hear the melodies. And you are looking. This man is in this place. He does not know what is upon him. Because they lack the grace for visibility. I want to pray for you. Whatever will make men know you are there. Whatever will make men. To see the investment of the spirit upon your life. And to encourage you and reward you. I pray, may the grace that makes this happen rest on you now. May that grace rest on you now. Hallelujah. Don't be tired though. I'm speaking over your life. Listen. One of the greatest blessings in my life today is the gift of men. One of the greatest blessings in this ministry today is the gift of faithful men faithful sons faithful daughters when men of God come and cry their ordeal and tell me the pains and the backstabs that they receive perpetually sometimes I return to God and I say Lord I thank you it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth there are men of God today who cannot sleep they can't call anybody a son they can't call anybody a daughter they don't trust anybody because they have been so wounded they are bleeding left, right and center. Every week is an episode of pain. God has given the gift of men. Not just in this ministry, but the gift of strategic people. I was in Lagos this morning before I came and then came for Koinonia. And I was thinking to myself while I was on my way back, if God does not help a man by connecting you to strategic relationships, life will be hard unbearably hard I don't know who has struggled in this place and you are tired of struggling maybe you inherited this thing from the families you came from in the name that is above all names I pray for you may a help arise this moment may help us rise 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 this moment Now listen to me please. Essentially, there are two principal ways God channels his blessings to the saints. Listen please. We have a series on that coming. But I want you to listen. Number one, the works of your hands. The first way that God channels resources to come to you is through the works of your hands. Whatever it is you are doing, preaching, singing, business, your job. Number two, relationships these are the two principal channels by which God communicates his resources to the saints let me repeat the works of your hands number two relationships when God wants to accelerate your becoming he sends both he empowers the works of your hands 
and then connects you with strategic relationships. There are many people who have great ideas that they should not even be crying for rent, but the relationships that will help them. Remember John chapter 5, I have no man when the waters is there to put me there. I'm praying for you one more time if you have the faith to receive. The relationship that must be introduced to your life before the end of February, in fact, before the miracle service, I pray for you this week, may you encounter those helpers. This week, may you encounter those helpers. Can I tell you, and I say this with every sense of humility, there is nothing I have cried about in my life that God did not raise a man to hear me. I pray for you, the days of crying alone, without help, without helpers, those days come to an end now. Now listen, in my life as a man of God, I have seen attacks. In my life as a man of God, I have seen attacks from demons, attacks from hell. I have seen demons. I know the extent of Satan's hatred for me on account of the souls that are saved. I have found my safety and my immunity in the world. There is nothing Satan can do about what God is doing. I want to pray for you because many of you, when you go through attacks, it brings you down. The mysteries of hiding behind the cross, hiding behind the name that immunes you. Some of you, your companies have refused to rise today because of someone, something, something someone said, something someone did. When the words of men keep you down, you don't know how to be immune. God stands by men like a mighty, terrible one. When God places his hand behind you, woe betides the resistance that is before you. Therefore, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, every attack on your life, attack on your ministry, attack on your health, attack on your job, this night, this moment, I release you to safety. 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 Every power that has vowed that you will not see the end of February, that you will not enter March, either killing people in your life, deteriorating your health, I call upon the God of my covenant. Anybody who will not give you rest, May my God clear them out of the way. Every evil mark on you. Bringing disfavor. Making people hate you. Listen. Hear me. There are people who have this mark of disfavor. The moment they see them, they just say, I don't like you. What did you do? Just like that. If there's anyone carrying that mark now, my God, I just saw fire. I decree and declare, may that mark be wiped off your face, be wiped off your destiny, be wiped off your face, be wiped off your destiny, be wiped off your face, be wiped off your destiny. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh. Spirit of wisdom. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Listen, you are about to receive a grace now that I've not prayed for for a long time. It's called the spirit of might. Listen, 
Hear me? You see this work that we do? If you don't have the spirit of might, you will collapse one day and die on the stage. Believe me when I tell you, and I'm not exaggerating, from yesterday into today till now, I have not slept. Now it's good to rest, but sometimes a duty calls. We had a broadcast to our Canada family, and when we were done, by the time I came, I was on a call that lasted over I don't know how many hours. And by the time that was done, it was morning, had to leave for Lagos, went to preach, did everything, returned back, now I'm here. And it's not like I'm going home just to go and jump on the bed. There is something called the spirit of might. There are many of us, 25, 35, you are already as if you are 90 years. If men like our father in the Lord can still be going around nation to nation, you see that now. Our father in the Lord, Daddy Onubogu, 85 years, this man is still moving around. When I travel to the east and he's around, at his age, he comes to join those to receive me. I've rebuked the ministers many times and said, don't allow this man. This man is my grandfather. Don't allow the, where I come from. You don't keep an elder for a small boy like this to come and receive him. But he perceives it as honor. And this man will stand. He's not holding a stick. He's not bent over. Come on now. There is a grace that comes on men. I'm praying for you. The spirit of might that empowers you for the work. Receive it now. Receive it now. You will not collapse in service. You will not die while serving. Hallelujah. The last prayer for you and then we are done for tonight. I decided particularly to close early this night for a reason. I want to pray for you. The grace to know what God is doing. Listen, listen, listen. One of the greatest advantage in my life is the blessing of the seeing eye. When you are taken unawares by life, you don't know what God is doing. You don't know what tomorrow will be like. Many of us just stumble blindly into things. You will see opportunities and leave it without knowing it is there. I want to pray for you. Whatever has covered your eyes, that you are not seeing what God is doing in your life. You are not seeing what God is doing in Nigeria. You are not seeing what God is doing in your ministry. I pray for you now. May your eyes be open. Spiritually, may your eyes be open. Financially, may your eyes be open to opportunities. Listen, when you have the miracle of open eyes, make reference to my teaching the seeing eyes. There are things you should cry about that you will be laughing because it is God making a testimony for you. If you do not understand how God works, you will be binding and casting something good that is coming to you because you just do not know it is God working. I'm praying for you again. Whatever needs to come as a blessing to your life, I bring it speedily to you. Koinonia, hear me. And I'm speaking to our global family. I cried to God this year and I said, Father, preserve my people for me. We are not ready for obituaries this year. Let me pray for you again. I'm praying for you. If there is any covenant that connects you to the grave, using sicknesses, using accidents, using plane crashes, using kidnaps, I decree and declare, be released now. Be released now. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is giving me one instruction. Please stretch your hands towards me. The Lord is saying I should speak over your hands. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. Every good thing is received with the hands, not the feet. When I give you something, you receive it with your hand. No matter how heavy it is, you will try. Even if someone assists you still with the hand, I pray for you. 
as God has instructed that you stretch it towards me. If there is anything on your hand that is a cost to your blessings, that does not in the name of Jesus, every chain holding your hand so that you cannot receive the reward God has for you. I break that chain now. I break a kote balata. I break that chain now. Every blessing my God has released, may it enter your hand. 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 Enter your hand. And that of your children. And that of your spouse. And that of your family members. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says, he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he is not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, my father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had, when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to, them, to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of the, those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. So, I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life, will turn your life around.